This conference will now be recorded. A lot of a goal. I'm just going through and muting everyone so that we don't have any background noise on the call while we're waiting. Our presentation will begin at 5.30. <clears throat> the chat box will be available and I will be monitoring that as we go along. So if you have any questions, if you're online with us, you may participate by asking questions there. <clears throat> Excuse me. For so those of you just joining us, those on of you the, just joining us on the oops, little feedback here. Okay. For those of you just joining us online and on the phone, as I mentioned before, our formal presentation will begin at 5:30. And what you're seeing now on the screen, for those of you online with us, is all of the slides that you'll be seeing. They're rotating on the screen right now. And <clears throat> we encourage everyone to ask questions via the chat box, which is the top middle bubble at the at, on your screen. And I'm there monitoring all of the questions that come in throughout the night. So feel free to join in the chat box and ask your questions but we do ask that you visit our project website, which is jfkblvdproject.com. And there you will see all of the information about the study. You'll also find a comment form, which is where we encourage you to submit all official comments and questions about the project. And again, our presentation will begin at 5.30. And we thank you so much for your participation.
Welcome again to everyone who's on the line with us tonight and on, on the phone. Again, my name is Nicole and we will begin the formal presentation at 5.30 p.m. If you're online with us tonight, what you are seeing on the screen is all of the slides that will explain to you how to participate in the GoToMeeting event tonight and some overview slides about the project. But again, we will have the formal presentation at 5.30. And this meeting is being recorded and will be available on our project website, which is jfkblvdproject.com. And I've also indicated that we have a chat box available for all of you who are participating via the online platform this evening. The chat box is at the top right hand side of your screen. It's the little chat bubble in the middle and you can type in your questions there and we will address them this evening. And I'll probably come on every five to ten minutes or so and just remind you of what you're seeing and uh, again we thank you for your participation.
Good evening, everyone, again. We're just about 10 minutes away from our official presentation. So I just want to note that we are showing on the slides on the screen, if you're if you're watching along with us, it has all of the information for you on how to participate in the meeting. We will keep everyone muted until the end when we will go through the chat box and answer all of the questions that come in during the presentation, including those who are calling in as well. Everyone will have a part of an opportunity to participate in the questions. And again, this session is being recorded. This video will be available on the project website. Again, that URL is jfkblvdproject.com. And we encourage you to please visit the website to participate in our community input survey, as well as submit your official comments and questions through the website. And again, we will get started in just about nine minutes. So thank you for your participation.
Once again, we are just about five minutes away from our formal presentation. We thank you for your patience during this time. We do want to remind everyone that the public information centers are open to the public and they are in open format, meaning from five to seven, visitors are welcome to come in at any time and ask questions. And also, of course, visit the project website, which we encourage you to do and visit our uh, site to fill out a community profile, I'm sorry, community input survey and a comment form because all official comments should be made through the website. Uh, we wanna note once more that this meeting is being recorded and we will begin our presentation in just a couple of minutes and appreciate your patience as we get started in a moment. All right, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Public Information Center meeting. On behalf of the project team, I would like to thank everyone for participating in this evening's event, excuse me. My name is Nicole Pace Adeo from Stokes Creative Group and I am the Community Involvement Facilitator. Hudson County, in cooperation with the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority, the New Jersey Department of Transportation, and the Federal Highway Administration, are hosting tonight's online public information center meeting to inform local residents, officials, businesses, and the general public of the local concept development study of JFK Kennedy Boulevard from Pavonia Avenue to St. Paul's Avenue, located in Jersey City. The purpose of tonight's Public Information Center meeting is to inform the public about the condition of the roadway and to solicit public input and comment towards the project's purpose and need. This meeting is being conducted in conformance with federal and state regulations. The public is invited and encouraged to comment on the study, and this meeting is open to all members of the public.
Please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be visible on the project's website for public's review and comment on the project. We also appreciate your patience with this online format and hopefully we will not have any technical glitches this evening. Now, before we get started with the formal presentation in just a moment, I would like to go over three quick housekeeping items so that you know how to participate in tonight's GoToMeeting event. First is mute. Everyone participating today will remain muted to avoid any background noise so that you can hear the presentation clearly. Second, the video on and off button is at the bottom of your screen. You will see your microphone and video functions, so you can turn them on and off there, and video is not required to participate. Third is the chat box. At the top right of the corner, you will see three icons. The middle one looks like a talk bubble, and that's the chat box. You should submit your questions there as the meeting is going on, and later on, we will go through and answer them. After all of the questions have been addressed in the chat box, we can open up the meeting to additional questions that may come up, and you can certainly voice them verbally. I will also unmute all of the phone-in participants individually and ask you for your verbal questions. But I will explain more about that when we get to the Q&A portion of the meeting. But for right now, we would like to begin the formal presentation. So I'd like to introduce to you Bernie Borchers from GPI. He's our project manager and he will begin tonight's formal presentation. Bernie, I've got you unmuted. You can, you can go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint presentation and we can get started. Okay, uh, give me one second. We said we'd have no technical glitches and I'm sure they're gonna start right about now. Um, <laughs> So let me see if I can escape that one and go back here. And uh, I apologize about this. Trying to share the screen, go to the new screen so we can have another presentation. There we go. Great. Okay. Okay. So that half hour wait, boy, that was like uh, having to wait in an airplane to take off, huh? So, uh, so I guess now we're ready to move on and go on to the actual presentation. I was waiting for the peanuts there, Nicole. So, but I guess we never got them. So. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Like Nicole said, uh, this is the uh, this is for the project from JFK Kennedy Boulevard from Provoni Avenue to St. Paul's Avenue. It's a local concept development study. Uh, good afternoon and thank you for joining our presentation. Uh, once again, my name is Bernie Borchers and I'm serving as the uh, consultant project manager for the study. Uh, please note that today's public information center is gonna be the first of two public information centers to be held during the course of concept development. Uh, for this, the first public information center, uh, we will be requesting your input on the project's purpose and need. We would appreciate any input regarding your concerns or questions related to safety and mobility within the study area. Um, the slide you're seeing now is basically the agenda. So during the course of today's presentation, I will cover the following, the project team, the project delivery process, the project location and the limits of the study area, the existing conditions as related to safety and mobility, the crash and traffic data analysis as already performed by the project team, the 2015 road so, uh, safety audit, the results of the stakeholder surveys that we have received to date, the work that we've completed to date, what are the next steps following the public information center, uh, and I'm going to basically make a pitch to direct you back to the project website, which Nicole has already done, and I'll make another one. And finally, we'll go back to uh, questions and comments. Oops. Uh, like to, at this time, I'd like to present the project team. Present, representing uh, Hudson County, we have Mr. Jose Sierra, who is the Director of Traffic and Transportation for the county. 
and he is serving as the county's project manager for the study. He is joined by the county engineer, Mr. Thomas Malavesi. From the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority, we have joining us Ms. Patricia Newton, who will serve as the project, NJTPA's project manager. And from the Jersey Department of Transportation, we have Ms. Pam Garrett, who's from the Bureau of Environmental Program Resources. And from the Bureau of Local Aid, we also have Nabil Abuyub and Ms. Marina Gala. And finally, from Greenman Peterson, we have myself, Bernie Borchers, serving as the project manager, and Mr. Christopher Maris serving as the deputy project manager. This slide basically is a summary of the project delivery process. Um, the project delivery process consists of four distinct phases. The first phase is concept development phase, which we are currently in. This is followed by preliminary engineering, final design, and then the actual construction of the project. During the concept development phase, we collect available data regarding the current status of safety and operations, along with the constraints within the study limits. Two key elements of this data collection phase is the collection of crash and traffic data, along with analysis of the same. Additional information that we collect during concept development are geometric features that condition in conformance with current standards of the traffic signals, signing and pavement markings, uh, parking restrictions and adherence to the same, busing operations, and pedestrian, bicycle, and transit use facilities uh, within the study limits. We have also performed an environmental screening, which has identified the environmental constraints and cultural resources within the study area. And from this data collection effort and input that we receive from local officials, stakeholders, and the public, we then develop the project's purpose and need statement, which is just that. It's a summary of the project's purpose and the need justifying the purpose, such as high crash rates, overrepresented crash types and conditions operational deficiencies, uh, demand from all the different road users, transit users, bicyclists, pedestrians, motorists, and input from you. Once we have finalized our purpose and need statement, we then develop alternatives to mitigate the identified deficiencies within the community, the context of the community. Once the alternatives are then developed, we will then reach out again uh, to the local officials, stakeholders, and the public to receive their feedback on these alternatives. Using this feedback and the constraints identified during the course of concept development, uh, we have developed what's called a preliminary preferred alternative. This is selected and then the entire process is documented in the concept development report. Uh, this preliminary preferred alternative approved by the appropriate agencies is then advanced to the next phase, which is preliminary engineering. Uh, this slide simply is, uh, shows the uh, flow diagram of the activities performed during the concept development phase. Uh, the activity circled in red is the first public information center, which is where we are today. So that's basically the, your, your at here symbol. Uh, this, is, this slide basically is showing the project, which is located within Jersey City. I mean, everybody on, online are very familiar with the project area. And it extends from J, uh, along Kennedy Boulevard from Pavonia Avenue, uh, which is just north of Journal Square, to a point of approximately 650 feet north of St. Paul's Avenue. Um, going over some of the existing conditions within the project area, the existing land use within the project limits consists of high density commercial and businesses coupled with mixed residential. You have Journal Square and the path are located just outside the southern limit of the project. And you have Public School Number 31 and the Golden Door Charter School are located near the northern limit of the project. You also have New Jersey Transit bus stops all along the corridor. Several, re, uh, <clears throat> sorry, several cultural resources exist within and adjacent to the study area. St. John's Roman Catholic Church is located along Kennedy Boulevard uh, at, Wink at Van Winkle Avenue in Brooks Place. The Stanley Theater is also located along Kennedy Boulevard at Pavonia Avenue. And the New Jersey Railroad Bergen Cut Historic District, along with the JFK Boulevard Bridge, are located near the southern limits of the project. 
while the Erie Railroad Main Line, Erie Railroad uh, Bergen Archway, and Pulaski Skyway Historic Districts are all located near the northern project limits. Uh, please note that we only identified uh, historic properties and districts within 500 feet and that are listed in uh, the NJR and uh, National Register of Historic Places or have been formally determined eligible for listing in the same. Oops. My apologies. Um, so to analyze the crash history within the project limits, we collected the individual crash reports for all vehicular clash crashes for the three-year period between January 1st, 2016 and December 31st, 2018. And we also collected all pedestrian and bicyclist crashes reports for the five-year period between January 1st, 2014 and December 31st, 2018. We identified 256 vehicular crashes for the three-year period and 18 pedestrian bicycle crashes for the five-year period. The resultant crash rate of 30.67 crashes per million vehicle miles is relatively high for a roadway with this given cross section. Overrepresented crash types as compared to roadways with a similar cross section include same direction side swipe, parked vehicle, left turn U turn, backing, and pedestrian and bicyclist crashes. Overrepresented crash conditions uh, include that signalized intersection. Uh, it should be noted there was not uh, an overrepresentation of wet or nighttime crashes, which typically indicates adequate drainage and roadway lighting. Uh, this slide basically just summarizes the number of crashes at each of the intersections along Kennedy Boulevard within the project limits. Uh, as you can see, Newark Avenue experienced the highest number of crashes for this study time period. To analyze the current operation uh, and level of service along Kennedy Boulevard, uh, we perform classified manual turning movement counts at the five signalized intersections within the project limits, which include Pavonia Avenue, Cottage Street, Newark Avenue, uh, Van Winkle Avenue and Brooks Place, and then St. Paul's Avenue. We also counted uh, the unsignalized intersection of Van Ripen Avenue. Uh, the data collection program was performed in September 2019. Uh, we counted trucks, cars, buses, pedestrians and bicyclists. Uh, the AM, midday and PM peak hour volumes by movement were then summarized on traffic flow diagrams, which are indicated on this slide. And on this slide, you can see Pavonia, Van Ripen and Cottage Street. And on the following slide, this is just a continuation of the traffic flow diagram. You can see Newark Avenue, uh, Van Wickle Avenue, Brooks Place and St. Paul's Avenue. The existing traffic volumes were then projected to the future year of 2045 using uh, forecasted population employment data that was made available from NJTPA. In addition to the population employment data from NJTPA, uh, we requested uh, what's called link volume data for validation purposes from the North Jersey Regional Transportation Model, otherwise known as the NJRTM. Uh, this model includes uh, attempts to include all planned developments along with the background growth rates so they can uh, accurately uh, de uh, com uh, develop uh, volumes for the future. Uh, using the existing and future year traffic volumes, we analyze the operation of the five signalized intersections and the one inter unsignalized intersection within the project corridor. Of note, as you can see on the chart, the intersections of Kennedy Boulevard and Pavonia Avenue and Kennedy Boulevard and Newark Avenue during the AM peak hour operate at a level of service E, uh, with the remaining intersections and time periods operating at a level of service D or better for the existing conditions. Uh, when it goes to a level of service, level of service goes from an A to F, with F being the worst. Um, we then grew the volumes, like I said, to 2045. Uh, with the no build condition, meaning no improvements. And uh, as is expected with the anticipated growth in the project area, the overall operation worsens in the future year of 2045. Uh, it is anticipated that the intersection of Kennedy Boulevard and Pavonia Avenue will operate at level service E for both the AM and PM peak hours. And the intersection of Kennedy Boulevard and Newark Avenue 
will operate a level service F for both peak hours. And the intersection of Kennedy Boulevard and St. Paul's Avenue will operate a level service F in the PM peak hour. hour. Um, in 2015, a road, safe, a road safety audit was performed. Uh, basically, a road safety audit is a, a formal safety performance examination of an existing or future road or intersection by independent audit team. That audit team may uh, include local officials, uh, the city engineer, uh, local police, emergency responders, et cetera. And it qualitatively estimates and uh, reports on potential road safety issues and identifies opportunities for improvements in safety for all road users. Um, some of the key issues that were identified in the road safety audit included significant, it was identified that there's significant pedestrian, bicycle, and transit use generators, such as the PATH, New Jersey Transit bikes, uh, Buses, and the city uh, bike docking stations. Uh, what was also noticed during the 2015 road safety audit was that there was illegal parking, including parking too close to an intersection, double parking, et cetera. Uh, and there was also noted that there was significant underground utilities throughout the project area. Uh, overhead or aerial, t uh, aerial utilities only exist from St. Paul St. Paul's Avenue and Northwood. Uh, this uh, slide is a continuation of the road safety audit. Um, uh, also noted in the audit, some of the signing is not in conformance with the current MUTCD. Uh, Eight-inch signal heads are provided in some of the side streets and should be replaced with 12-inch signal heads for improved visibility. Um, not all of the pedestrian push buttons are in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, although the curb ramps uh, have been recently reconstructed to be in compliance with the act. And some of the pavement markings, as, as you see when you're walking or driving along the corridor, are, are worn out. Uh, the road safety audit uh, recommended adding curb extensions and refuge islands um, for pedestrians where feasible, upgrading the traffic signals, uh, repainting the pavement markings, and investigating the feasibility of installing in-street bicycle facilities specifically physically separated bicycle lanes. Uh, the road safety audit also recommended to add lead pedestrian intervals. Uh, lead pedestrian intervals are basically uh, a time that is allotted in the, in the signal cycle that allows pedestrians to enter the intersection uh, when vehicles are stopped so that they can, the pedestrians can be better seen uh, by the motorist. Uh, they currently do, we do currently have lead pedestrian intervals at the intersections of Kennedy Boulevard and Cottage Street and Kennedy Boulevard and Ben Winkle Avenue and Brooks Place. One of the other recommendations in the safety audit was to add pedestrian only phases, also known as pedestrian scrambles. Uh, they currently, we currently do have pedestrian only phases at the intersections of Kennedy Boulevard and Newark Avenue and Kennedy Boulevard and Pavonia Avenue. One of the other recommendations was to add back plates with retro reflective borders to make the signal heads uh, more visible and ensure that uh, all the timings or clearance intervals for the all red, yellow, and pedestrian clearance times are up to current standards. The road safety audit also made some recommendations, uh, one of which uh, were geometric recommendations, one of which was the elimination of the channelized right turn along Kennedy Boulevard northbound at Newark Avenue. And uh, in this image here, you can see that one of the recommendations was to remove the dedicated right turn lane along Kennedy Boulevard southbound at St. Paul's Avenue. We're not saying that this is going to necessarily be one of the improvements, uh, but it's, it's up for consideration. Uh, these improvements, uh, elimination of the uh, right turn lane and elimination of the channelized uh, right turn uh, at Kennedy Boulevard northbound at Newark Avenue, what they do is in essence, they shorten the crossing time for the pedestrians. Uh, 
as of today, I believe we have 95 or 96 responses uh, from our community input survey. So I appreciate everybody who has responded to the online survey. Uh, we really appreciate the uh, feedback. Um, this community input survey uh, can be found on the project website, as Nicole said before, at www.jfkblvdproject.com. Uh, if you have not completed the survey, please find some time to do so. Uh, it's a great way to have your voice heard. Uh, the first two questions on the survey are, how often do you use this section of Kennedy Boulevard in a month? And do you use public transportation in the area? Uh, the majority of the replies stated that they use Kennedy Boulevard often or every day, and that they often use public transportation. Oh, it's uh, noted that over 50% of all people uh, who live reside in Jersey City use public transportation. So that is a major consideration uh, as we develop our alternatives. Uh, the third question on the survey inquired as to the type of public transportation do you use? Uh, the most common answers were New Jersey Transit, PATH, and City Bike. Uh, the fourth question asked, how is this study important to you? The most common answers were that you were either a resident or commuter, and that you walk, bike, or use transit or, transit or any combination of the same. So once again, public transportation is big. The fifth, the fifth question asked, what are the key issues in the study area as you see them? And the two most common responses uh, were traffic and safety. We then had uh, two other questions, uh, fill-in questions, number six and number seven, uh, with the common themes uh, being the importance of safety, the need for bike lanes, specifically protected bike lanes, and statements that the project area is unsafe and unpleasant place to walk or bike. It was also add, added or noted that some of the stakeholders should include Bike JC, Safe Streets JC, the Royal Men, New Jersey Transit, the Jitney Services, the JW Community at the Stanley Theater, and the Mana Contemporary, along with surrounding neighborhood associations. Um, the activities that have been completed to date during the concept development phase, uh, we have identified what we call controlling substandard design elements and deficiencies. Uh, we've had coordination with the utility companies. We have prepared environmental screening. Uh, we have initiated uh, the community survey and have, like I said, received a good amount of feedback already. Uh, we developed the project website. Uh, we have developed the uh, public information plan and held our first local officials and stakeholders meetings. Our next steps. Uh, with the completion of the Public Information Center today, our next steps for this concept development study include confirming the project's purpose and need. That's going to be confirmed based on the input that we received to date, that we have received to date from local official stakeholders and the information that we received today from you, along with our inventory assessment and analysis of these existing conditions. Uh, we will then develop alternatives that will address the project's purpose and need. The alternatives analysis uh, should be completed sometime uh, we anticipate in October. And with the alternatives in hand, uh, we will then hold our second set of meetings. We will once again meet again with all our alternatives. We will meet with local officials, stakeholders, and we'll have another public information center. Uh, based on the input that we have received to date from local officials and stakeholders, along with our work that we have done, the inventory assessment and analysis of the existing conditions, uh, we have developed a draft purpose to need. This is a draft. Uh, it's going to be finalized once we have your input. Uh, this draft purpose to need, um, it, basically the draft purpose uh, states that it is to uh, enhance safety and re could reduce congestion for all road users. And when we say all road users, uh, that would include pedestrians, bicyclists, transit users, et cetera, including motorists. Uh, and the need that supports this purpose is the identified overall high crash rate, uh, the poor levels of service, 
and um, and a significant number of pedestrians, bicyclists, and transit users within the project area. During our course, uh, our, the initial course of concept development, we have also identified other goals and objectives. Um, the first one being improving bicyclist, pedestrian, and transit user access throughout the corridor, uh, avoiding or minimizing negative uh, social, economic, and envir environmental impacts, minimizing negative impacts to all road users during construction, uh, considering the context of the project area, and identifying aesthetic enhancements. Also addressing safety and operational concerns regarding buses, both New Jersey trans, uh, transit buses, jitney buses, uh, emergency vehicles, uh, deliveries, and also uh, funeral service for uh, St. John's Church. And we also are gonna be looking at maximizing congestion relief uh, to the extent possible for all, all modes of mobility. Once again, I'm making the uh, pitch to visit our project website. Uh, this website will be updated and it'll provide you the latest information regarding the project and also allows you to provide your comments and suggestions. Uh, like I said, also please take the survey if you had not had a chance. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated because the more input we get, uh, the more reflective of our, um, our selected alternative will be of, of the community needs. So at this time, um, we'll be taking uh, questions and uh, we'll be answering them. And I will hand it back to Nicole to uh, do her thing. Great, thank you, Bernie, thank you very much. All right, as he said, now is the portion of the meeting where we will go through the questions and provide some answers. As a reminder, you can submit your questions through the chat box icon. It's located at the top right of your screen. And if you would like to verbally ask a question, please type in the word, I have a question, or something like, please unmute me for a question, and I will call on you in order, and then unmute you to speak with the team. And once more, I would just like to note that all official comments must be made via email, mail, or through the project website. This chat box this evening is only for unofficial questions and will not be recorded as official documents. With that said, we did have a few questions that came in during the presentation I wanna go back to. Um, one of the first questions was actually, uh, what is the Bureau of Local Aid? So Pam, if you're on, can you unmute yourself and answer a little bit about what local aid is. Well, actually, that's not my bureau, but um, my understanding is a representative from the local aid unit on the line. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll attempt to answer that question. Then. Um, their unit within the, the New Jersey Department of Transportation that facilitates projects from local sponsors, such as um, various county municipal um, agencies. Okay, they Sarbjit, did you want to add anything? I believe local aid is on, online. Nabil, you're on, on, on the line? I do not see Nabil on here. Oh, okay. Um, in that case, um, they are in lead of all um, federal funds that are coming through for um, uh, local uh, for local um, funds for, for instance, county funds, uh, municip municipal aid funds, and um, as well um, earmark funds, so TAP funds. So um, they're in charge of that. So uh, overseeing all of uh, local, locally led projects. Um, and they're the engineering experts um, to facilitate, um, assist uh, in reviewing the plans and authorizing the funds for, um, for all projects. Okay, great. Thanks, Arbjit. No problem. All right, Bernie, I know you mentioned 
uh, some scramble treatments and some pedestrian issues, but Ollie has a couple of questions here that ask similar topics. So he said, if Pavonia and Newark intersections have all pedestrian phases, can they receive pedestrian scramble treatments? Well, uh, the pedestrian scramble is just that. It's the same thing as an all pedestrian phase. Uh, I, if he's meaning the um, uh, changing the um, pavement markings to actually have um, to be more uh, resemble uh, what pedestrians can cross uh, diagonally or uh, or you know uh, parallel or what have you. Um, I would have to leave that uh, uh, question. I would present that question to Jose to see if that's something the county would entertain. So. Jose. Go ahead, Jose. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, yes, we will look into that, and if, if we think it's feasible and it makes sense, we'll definitely uh, we'll look into that and, and implement it. Great, thank you. Uh, he also says here, I see that you have measured level of service for drivers and projected future level of service. What kind of measures for pedestrian delays or wait times have been done? Well, we've counted all the pedestrians uh, at this time, um, and we don't really have a measure of pedestrian delays, uh, but what we do is we, we make sure that the pedestrian clearance times at each of the signalized intersections is sufficient so that when a pedestrian pushes the button or if it's a fixed time, has the time necessary to cross, uh, to, cross to make safely make the crossing. So um, we don't really have a pedestrian delay per se, um, but we do have pedestrian counts and we have also assured that there is adequate pedestrian time for it to safely cross the street. Okay. Do any of the walk signals require a button push? If so, can they be upgraded to pedestrian recall? I will answer that, Nicole. All pedestrian traffic signals in your city are pedestrian on the pedestrian recall. You don't need to press the push button. They come automatically at all times, 24 hours, seven days a week. Okay, great. What about speed controls? Food trucks park on this section of JFK. How does this study factor this? Well, during the course of concept development, we could look at um, some traffic calming techniques um, that the, that the the county has within their tool uh, toolkit. Um, I could probably Jose could probably expand on that better than I can, but uh, I'm not sure. Food trucks park on this section. How does the study factor this? We really haven't taken into account food trucks. Um, other than um, if they're illegally parking. But Jose, what about the speed controls? Can you expand on that or? Well, the speed controls, we're going to look into this under this uh, uh, study. If uh, we find that there's speeding out there, definitely we're going to implement some traffic control measurements to reduce the speed. We have done some of it already because we have changed the timings from our traffic signals to reduce the speed of night time. It starts from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, the time, the traffic signals timing have changed from 100 second background during daytime to 70 second background cycle during nighttime. So basically, they change twice as fast at nighttime than during daytime, and that was meant to uh, reduce speeding along Kennedy Boulevard at nighttime. Okay. Thing about the food trucks, we're going to look into it. As far as I know, the only food truck that I believe that it's out there. It's the fruit truck on the southbound side that sometimes is there between Ben Winkle and St. Paul's Avenue. So I wanted this study, we'll look into that too as well. Okay, great. <clears throat> Another question is, I'm sorry, uh, some comments here 
from Mary. It says, I have significant concerns with the intersection of JFK Pavonia that are interrelated. Number one is the total lack of signage at path destinations, uh, sorry, path designating pa passenger pickup and drop off areas. Number two is persistent chronic double parking on both sides of Pavonia at JFK for passenger drop off and pickup, totally un unenforced by JCPD. And third is inappropriate lacking lighting at JFK and Pavonia intersections on the west side over the path tracks where the path building is brightly lighted and pedestrians are left totally in the dark. And I did advise Mary to please submit that comment through the website or via email or mail so that we can record that as an official comment. I don't know if, uh, Bernie, you want to address any of those comments? Well, the, the lack of signage uh, for the path, uh, we'd have to coordinate the path station as part of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. So we'll have to, co uh, we can coordinate with them uh, or reach out to them uh, and, and provide them this comment. Um, the double parking, the uh, double parking is once again, it is an enforcement issue. Um, so, um, that's, um, you know, you have to have enforcement coupled with engineering and education. Uh, all three phases need to work together to, to improve any corridor. Uh, and, but we can also look at the, uh, the lighting again at, uh, we will, we can take a look at the lighting. We can go out with the light meter and measure the lighting at the uh, at the intersection to uh, to see where there is uh, areas where there is inadequate lighting and look for measures to improve that lighting. Okay, thank you. Steve wants to know why isn't speed a goal or objective? Um. Like Jose said, uh, speed is, um, I, I assume, control of, of speed. Um, so it it is uh, considered when we do, uh, when we go through the alternatives and uh, in, in this comment and other comments that have been brought up regarding speed, uh, like Jose said, you know, they, uh, they change the cycle lengths at night to try to reduce speeding. Uh, by changing the cycle lengths, uh, you know, people, uh, can't just get a set of, uh, a, a set of green lights and just charge down the road uh, at 40 miles an hour. Uh, but we can look at uh, traffic calming uh, as one of the, uh, and see if we can incorporate that into our alternatives. So um, that will definitely be something that we looked at. Okay, great. David says, thank you so much for caring for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, Sumit, Sumit says, will county work with city to plant more trees along this stretch, as well as build green infrastructure, such as landscape curb extensions and bioswales to help us mitigate threats posed by climate change? For example, many residents on St. Paul's experience flooding in their homes due in part to accept excess surface runoff. Will storm drains be better situated since some right now don't catch storm water? Um, we are going to be looking at uh, pedestrian uh, curb extensions. Uh, regarding green infrastructure, um, it's, uh, I'll, uh, if Tom Malavese is on the line, it's probably best that he answers that. But uh, basically, they, uh, the county uh, would support green infrastructure uh, with the understanding that um, the city or some other group uh, signs on to maintain uh, that that uh, those uh, that green infrastructure, uh, but if uh, Tom is available, maybe you can answer that in greater detail. Sure, sure I can. Um, county is currently undertaking um, a, a move as as we redo and pave our roads. We're going to be starting to add more trees um, along. The corridors so um, when we get to the design phase we will absolutely uh, in encourage uh, our designer to add more trees to create a better a better streetscape uh, as far as the green um, techniques on the bump outs we've had conversations with uh, 
uh, at least one of the councilwomen in Jersey City and uh, County is amenable to adding green green things in the bump outs, but we've been, you know, talk to them about if we can get um, either the city or a neighbor group to adopt them um, and maintain them. The, the problem is we don't have the staff to maintain uh, a rain garden or a bioswale. So we've been working with the city of Jersey City to help uh, do those, but also work out who's going to maintain them. So we'll continue going that, that conversation going forward. Okay. Thank you, Tom. And then regarding the um, the excess surface runoff, um, will storm drains be better situated since summer right now don't catch storm water? Um, I guess that is more of a maintenance issue. Um, I mean, we can look at drainage as part of the um, as part of the scope for this concept development, but I think this this is referencing a a, a maintenance issue. It, it, it might also be a design issue too, uh, if I might chime in, Bernie, that, okay. uh, you know, it's possible over time, you know, inlets settle, change, um, the road grades change. So as we go into the design phase, we'll, we'll make sure that, uh, you know, the inlets that are there, if, if they can't be reworked to catch the water, we'll make sure we add new ones. Okay. And if, and if, if anyone has a particular area of concern, let us know and uh, we will try and address it sooner rather than later yeah like tom said i agree if if you um if you could be a little bit more specific on where those inlets are located then we can definitely um look at that during the design phase great thank you bernie adam says excessive speed especially on this section of jfk has come up as a concern among community members repeatedly he agrees with steve that speed is an issue okay like i, like I said before uh, and jose said we will definitely uh this is a, a comment that we're receiving uh, uh multiple times so we will definitely uh consider that and uh some of the uh measures that we uh you know um that we have to address speeding along the corridor mm -hmm. great and um diagonal crossings and signals was also something they mentioned here in the chat box that was of of importance to them yeah i mean uh like jose said you know we can definitely uh look at that you know uh basically what if you have um you know, a full pedestrian phase, uh, diagonal crosswalks uh, can be considered, so. Another comment from Adam says, pedestrians have to wait for three signal phases at Pavonia and Kennedy to cross. Um, just, I just a that. comment. This, all right, we'll check into that. I mean, usually the, the background cycle it's 100 seconds and yeah. that includes all phases of the intersection at this particular intersection there's four phases to it left turns pavonia can right right away and pedestrian phase so every 80 seconds which is about 80 uh every 70 seconds which is about a minute and 10 seconds a pedestrian phase comes up if it doesn't there's something wrong with that we will check into it tomorrow thanks jose Steve asks the question, are you working with utility companies? Recently, we have seen that section of road hampered by PSCNG, MUA, Suez, et cetera. Uh, we're right now, we're in the very early, whatever work they're doing is not related to this study. Uh, all we did at this point is identify the uh, utilities that have uh, facilities uh, within the project area. Uh, but we have yet to uh, coordinate them as we don't have a uh, alternatives to advance. And and the, the county is currently doing a project in that stretch of the road, and we've been working with PSEG and uh, the MUA when we have to to make sure that they upgrade uh, their their facilities. Um, there was a there was a, a leak in, on around one one thirty one thirty nine. Uh, and then PSENG decided to to be proactive and uh, replace some of their mains going from 
there up to Manhattan Avenue. So we've been working with them and uh, tell, asking them to get their work done now, sooner rather than later. So we're going to come in and pave the road soon. And, uh, you know, we want to we have their work done before we pave the road. So uh, we're working with them to get that work done. So we, we know that's going on and, and it's a short term pain, but once it's done, the road will be uh, clean and nice. So. Hey, Thanks, Tom. Tom. Tom, when do you anticipate that that section of the road will be paved? You know? I'm hoping uh, that section should be paved within the month. Wow, okay. Okay, some additional comments here. Adam says, perhaps all signals on county roads, but that is otherwise wholly incorrect. Signals at 139 are not on pedestrian recall. Signals at Tonnell and St. Paul's are not on pedestrian recall. Not all signals are pedestrian recall. For example, 139, they're speeding there. Chris says uh, Ollie is right. 139, the traffic light at 139, uh, it's not a, a county on jurisdiction. That's a New Jersey jurisdiction, NJDOT jurisdiction, the New Jersey Department of Transportation jurisdiction. So we have no uh, possibility to change that to recall, to pedestrian recall. As far as St. Paul's Avenue, that should be on recall. We will check that into that. But all traffic signals that are under the county jurisdiction in your city, they on pedestrian recall at all times. So we will check just in case something happens right, just lately and might not maybe uh, the computer something is wrong in there so uh, we will check into that thank you jose mary said i'm concerned that redesign will not offload more jfk traffic onto tonnell avenue which in this area is a residential street how can that be avoided Um, can you repeat the question, Nicole? Yeah. Sure. I'm concerned that redesign will not offload more JFK traffic onto Tonnell Avenue, which in this area is a residential street. How can that be avoided? Uh, are, you, are, you tunnel, are you talking about Tonnell Avenue is, is, is residential? Is that the question? I, I think that's what I, how I hear it. Um, I mean, lately, you know, lately, uh, over in my short tenure is in the county, a lot of the traffic on the boulevard has been um, bypass traffic um, from Tunnelly Avenue because of the Skyway and because of congestion on Route 1 and 9. Um, now that the Skyway's done, and if, if people aren't aware, uh, the Department of Transportation is building a parallel road to Tunnelly Avenue to take um, truck traffic and other traffic. So hopefully those improvements will will you know get more traffic down to the the more the less residential part of Tunnelly. Um, I don't know that uh, we can ensure if we if if people choose to drive down to Tunnelly. Uh, I don't know if there's anything we can do to prevent that. Both are public streets, so I'm not sure what we can do to prevent people from finding alternate routes if they choose not to take the boulevard. Okay. Steve said food trucks on west side food trucks are on the west side between Van Winkle and St. Paul's. And again, these these comments probably were coming in as we were talking about these things a while back. So I apologize if they seem out of sync. Further, Adam says, further on my comment above, pedestrians wait for three signal phases at Pavonia and Kennedy and then are only given 20 to 30 seconds to cross. I have seen parents with strollers and people in wheelchairs get caught in the middle of the intersection. So another area to look at. I would say we follow, we look at it, but we follow MGTCD standards, which is three and a half seconds per foot. And we give enough time to cross from curb to curb, plus then we give approximately an extra 10 seconds for the flashing hand. Also, at this particular intersection, there's refugee islands in the middle for those people who have problems crossing that they could stay and wait for the next cycle in the refugee islands. But the timing, it's there to cross from curb to curb. But we okay. will check again to make sure that that's working properly. Thank you. 
Chris said, right now the protected bike lane ends at Bergen and SIP. The study for the segment south of this one said they'd plan to extend the bike lane to Bavonia. Will this segment study look at extending the protected bike lane north from there? Well, that, that's going to be one of the alternatives. Uh, we'll be looking at, at extending the protected bike lane. It will definitely be in, in the alternatives. So uh, we'll see how uh, you know if it's feasible and make it fit. Um, you know, we'll definitely be looking at it. Okay. Um, if I can go back one, uh, Jose, I believe um, on the um, the pedestrian signals out at uh, they're not countdown pedestrian signals, right? Yes, uh, they are. All are. Yes, they pedestrian they countdown. Right. Even Pavonia, right? Okay. Pavonia. Sorry, sorry, Nicole, go ahead. No, no, that's fine. Just wanted to make sure. Um, okay, so Ollie says, Adam is right about how many cycles you have to wait to cross in some of the places. This is the kind of pedestrian level of service that deserves as much consideration. Adam said, better road design can discourage illegal road use. Rumble strips, timing lights, etc. Lighting is another issue. This section of JFK is surprisingly dark on the sidewalks at night. Sumit is right. All um, right, we'll, we will go out and we'll uh, we'll check the lighting. Okay. You know. Decorative lighting to light the sidewalks would be great. Michael agrees with the comments. Says extending bike lane from Bergen and SIP along JFK to St. Paul's. I live in the Heights and travel by bike with kids to the west side daily for school commute and safety is our main concern priority along this corridor. Okay. Adam says that Journal Square Community Associ Association could partner with you on the maintenance of the bioswales. Oh, okay. So that's something to note. And he asks, have you talked with JSQSID about maintenance regarding the bioswales? I'm not sure what that acronym stands for, JSQSID. I think that's the improvement district in the no, currently we haven't. Our 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 focus currently is the stretch between uh, Communipaw and SIP. So we haven't uh, had any conversations with anyone in General Square about maintenance. But that's certainly a group we can talk to. Okay. Adam says runoff is a design issue. The roads are not properly graded to drain the catch basins. The, uh, Sumit says the stormwater drain at St. Paul's and Kennedy doesn't catch the stormwater. The drain is too far and all of the excess water runs down to St. Paul's. So it's a design issue, not a maintenance issue. Okay, well, uh, right now we um, we don't have survey. Uh, once uh, the roadway is, um, is uh, uh, refinished or uh, paved, uh, we, we will be forming a uh, survey, so we'll have more information and can look at the, uh, the drainage at that time. Okay. Mary said, truck traffic between Charlotte Circle 1 and 9 and JFK is prohibited, but is still a huge problem. What can be done with this redesign to discourage through trucking on a residential street? The county prohibits the county prohibits trucks on on JFK Boulevard without they need to get a permit from us to do so, uh, other than local deliveries. Um, if if there are large trucks um, that are are getting up there, I think that would just again goes another one of the enforcement issues that we would have to focus on, and we can talk to Jersey City about that. Okay, thank you, Tom. 
Uh, Sumit says, will the sidewalks that have been damaged by PSENG and paved over with asphalt be addressed? All sidewalks that have been damaged through PSNG, PSNG should restore them to original uh, condition. So we will follow up on that with PSCNG. Thank you, Jose. Mary said, and again, how can we avoid offloading JFK traffic onto Tonnelly, a very overburdened stretch of road, which is in this area, is a residential neighborhood. How can we avoid offloading JFK traffic onto Tonnelly, a very overburdened stretch of road, which in this area is a residential neighborhood? Thanks, I'm that question before. Right? I, I don't have I don't have a, 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 a an answer for that at this point, but I, we can certainly talk to um, as we go forward. We'll we'll certainly talk to the traffic folks in Jersey City, and see if we can work together to to come up with some measures. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but. We'll, we'll work with them to see uh, what we can do to help alleviate that situation. Okay, thank you, Tom. And just for those of you who are still typing into the chat box, I am getting through towards the end here, but I'm still about seven or eight minutes behind when you've been typing in these questions. So uh, please remember if you would like to speak with any of the project team members and ask your questions verbally, all you have to do is please uh, just put unmute me or I have a question and I will unmute you and allow you to speak with the project team. And then we will also get to the callers on the line as well. Adam asks Tom, what parallel road you're referring to? But again, this was about seven minutes ago, so I don't know. Yeah, the, the, the state is building a road that they're calling New Road that runs parallel to Tunnelly Avenue from, I think, uh, Truck 1 and 9 up to Secaucus Road. And unless I, I misspoke, Jose, correct me if I'm wrong. And that's under construction now. They're actually working on the intersection of that at... Uh, uh, county County Road. Yeah, the County Road. Yeah, that's county Road. The, the County D The County Road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The DOT has taken. Uh, that's a DOT project. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Chris says, "May I suggest a bike lane that would certainly fit? JFK has plenty of room, and too many auto lanes. Geometry isn't the issue here." Jeff agrees. Of course, a bike lane would fit. Okay, definitely something that we're going to look at uh, as we go through our alternatives analysis. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Adam said, rep rep responding to Jose's comment regarding the crossing times, if people are given 3.5 seconds per foot to cross, pedestrians crossing Pavonia on the east side of the intersection of Pavonia and Kennedy is far more than 10 feet wide. There are three lanes of westbound traffic and two lanes of eastbound traffic on Pavonia. Even at nine feet per lane, that's 45 feet. Right, so that area, it's for, let's say if it's 60 feet, right, uh, divided by three and a half gives you 17 seconds to cross the road from curb to curb. We have approximately 30 seconds there to cross, so there's plenty of time to cross. You have to divide the width of the road by three and a half seconds, and that gives you the time that it will take an average person to cross from curb to curb. Okay, thank you for addressing that, Jose. Sumit says yes to a protected bike lane along this corridor. This would be very helpful to bicyclists as well as pedestrians who have to complete over, over a sidewalk because the road is so unsafe from drivers. I'm sorry, compete. They would have to, com pedestrians and cyclists have to compete over the sidewalks because the road is unsafe for, from the drivers. And Tony also says, yes, a protected lane on JFK should absolutely connect to one already on Bergen. And Steve says, Grand Street bike lanes seem to be working great, comparable in volume. Maybe a look over there can help expand 
spike roots. Adam said, regarding Chris's comment about the bike lanes, you could easily fit a two-way protected bike lane on the east side of Kennedy through the full project boundaries and only remove three parking spaces between Newark and Cottage. We have to make sure that we uh, get to Mr. Scales. Um, I know he also has some uh, comments regarding the parking. So. But sure, yeah, okay. well, well, like uh, Bernie said before, that would be one of our uh, one of the alternates under this project. So, uh, and we'll take it from there then. Sure. Yeah, I I've gotten just about to the end here, so I can actually go ahead and unmute John, Mr. Scales. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Would yes. you like to make some comments or questions? Uh, yes, I have. A, I have a lot of comments to make. I have. I've been living here for forty years across from St. John's Church, okay? This is a private home, and I have a business next door, which is a salon, which is the oldest salon in Jersey City. You're not bringing up one thing at all about the White Castle, which is the grip, the biggest uh, open place that we've taken to court and finally got them to close down their walk-in from 1 o'clock in the morning to 6. They closed down, but not the drive-in, and the drive-in is tremendous for the White Castle, and you people haven't even brought up the uh, the whole concept of the White Castle. The other problem is the Jersey City Police Department do not, do not patrol Kennedy Boulevard because of the Hudson County Police were disbanded 20 years ago. They don't move the food trucks that are supposed to move every two hours. I'm constantly on the phone with the councilmen and the people is getting trying to get the police here to move the food trucks. The law is every two hours, but the police do not enforce it. They do not enforce the speeding that goes on on Kennedy Boulevard. I can you can all come sitting on my porch and watch at night. The speeding is unbelievable through the lights and everything else. They had uh, on the corner of Brooks Place a a uh, projector to look, but they turned it and turned it off. So nobody is looking at the speeding that is going on on Kennedy Boulevard. And with regard to the bikes, when I was a kid, I'm close to 80 years old. We weren't allowed to drive bikes in Jersey City. I don't know what the mayor is trying to do to Jersey City with all these bikes. Most of the bikes are on the sidewalk. And now we have these electric things that are going on where these people should have licenses. They're on the sidewalks. No police are enforcing any of that. There are no police anywhere on Kennedy Boulevard. When I grew up, there were always police on Kennedy Boulevard, at Journal Square, by Westside Park, etc. Now there are none. And they don't want to patrol it because they're angry that the Hudson County police were dissolved. And I brought this up with the G's and everything else, but I, nothing seems to be done on Kennedy Boulevard. The big problem, and of course, the, in the past uh, six months, because of, I guess, uh, climate change, we've had over five floods in our basements, in, in, in the houses, and there's sewage floods. So something's wrong with the sewers that are not being able to hold the water that is coming down now when it does come down. It comes down in tremendous amounts, which everybody realizes. And these are the problems on Kennedy Boulevard. But to me, the biggest problem on Kennedy Boulevard is no police presence and no police stopping any of the violations that are going on, it, which includes the double and triple parking from the two Indian supermarkets that opened up on Newark Avenue, plus the lines of cars that come out from the White Castle, which you people haven't even brought up. Um, so there's, uh, the, the queuing from White Castle extends onto the actual, onto the, the roadway. It does. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. We took them to court and we got them to stop and close the place and walk in from one to six in the morning. They, the reason we did that is because they were sitting on a, eating hamburgers, uh, drunk on our porch. Uh, so we got that in court. We had to go to court, but they won where they can keep it open continuously for 24 hours. And it is one of the most, uh, I would say, uh, uh, 
largest drive-in place in Jersey City, and you people haven't even mentioned it. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of this uh, that you've mentioned, uh, they're, they're good points. Uh, a lot of it is... Uh, and, and to put a bicycle lane in front of my house and my business, there are seven parking spaces, okay, there, which I need for my clients to come to. I don't need uh, uh, people riding bicycles in front of my business. And first of all, they shouldn't be riding bicycles on Kennedy Boulevard. They should go on a side street. This is not some cutesy town in uh, Belgium or something, which uh, I think the mayor thinks it is. So what I, I've almost got hit a couple of times with bicycles on the street. When I yelled at the people, I said, what are you doing? It's too busy to go out in the street. So I said, well, don't drive your bicycle then. Get off your bicycle and walk. But anyway, the biggest thing for me is there's no police presence on Kennedy Boulevard to regulate the traffic, White Castle, these food trucks, they, uh, people come, on, they're there at 12 o'clock at night, okay? And they double park when they come to the food trucks and triple park. When you speak to the city, they're only allowed two hours at one spot, but the police don't enforce it. Why don't the police enforce it? Because I've watched the police get free meals from the food trucks. Hmm. So we have, there's a lot of problems on Kennedy Boulevard, especially, and I've been trying to get that light changed on Pavonia Avenue since Coochie in 1985. And they finally got back to me, says, John, we cannot change that light because it's in the area of the Department of Transportation out of Trenton. I don't understand why uh, uh, Trenton is controlling the light at Pavonia Avenue where you only have 20 seconds to get across the street. Uh, yeah, I don't think well, the, the, the light at Pav the light at Pavonia is controlled by the county, and as as we said, we will we'll look at that. The one that's controlled I, by the I state is the one that, near one thirty nine. So yeah, but there are no Hudson County police, so there's nothing in the county controlling anything. You know, I, I'm I'm going to take your comments to the sheriff tomorrow and see what action if we they they can talk to Jersey City Police. I can't promise anything, but I'll I'll take your concerns to them. Well, that, that's my biggest concern. And I've been hit, living in this house for 40 years and my business for 60 years. OK, it's the, uh, the longest operating salon in Jersey City. Now, to take away my parking spaces to put in a, a stupid bike lane would be ridiculous. All right. We appreciate all of your feedback today, um, John, and thank you very much for your time the other today. question is, Go uh, ahead. Will, will there be a face-to-face a -face type meeting that was originally proposed? I mean, it really could be done at the library uh, in their uh, theater there where people could sit distance apart with masks on so people could see and talk to an actual face or, or a human being. At this time, um, yeah, you know, it's it's uh, really um, up to, I guess, uh, I guess maybe a sergeant. Are you available to answer that question? Hello. Yeah, she's not available. Um... I mean, yeah, there, I can say there, there, there will be another later in this process, there will be another pick, which is what we have today. And uh, I think all of us on the phone would love to have an in-person meeting. Uh, it's just not feasible right now with, with all that's going on. So hopefully when that time comes, then yes, we, we, we can. But, you know, that'll depend on the, uh, the climate uh, at the time. So the reason that the speeding takes place is the people pull from Journal Square by Pavonia Avenue and rush to the highway. And that's where the speeding comes in place. We fought and we got the lights changed about uh, uh, eight months ago. OK, but they still go through the lights. There's nobody enforcing anything. They go actually go right through the red light. I can sit on my porch and watch them at night. 
The biggest thing is that we need enforcement on Kennedy Boulevard, and someone has to talk to the police in Jersey City and to stop this baloney because the Hudson County police was dissolved and they're still angry. That was 20 years ago. Okay. As I said, I'll take it to the sheriff tomorrow. Okay, please talk to him. I spoke to the sheriff and all and, and tried the best I can. And they really should enforce the food trucks and make them move every two hours like they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. I had the sheriff's department here when one of them, after uh, they moved in front of my house, the odors were coming in. We finally got the sheriff to move it. And they moved to another place and they're right at the corner at, at the church where people are coming in in the future for weddings and so forth, and they have to look, take pictures of, of, of a food truck standing there, which is ridiculous. All the police has to do is come and say, move. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate all of your feedback tonight again. And um, I um, I have several other questions here in the chat box, and we've got about 20 minutes left. Um, if we can get to a couple extra. But um, again, thank you very much, John. We've heard everything that you've said today and appreciate your time for sure. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple other questions here. Um, MM asks, what are the options for those making a right turn on Newark and St. Paul's? Where are those that want to make a right turn to go? What are the options for those making a right turn on Newark and St. Paul's? Where are those that want to make a right turn to go? Uh, St. Paul's, you can make a right turn in the, in both directions, I believe. Uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, if MM is still on, you can certainly type unmute me and we can get to your question. Um, we do have someone named Rich on here from PSENG, and he said if participants have PSENG related inquiries, you can contact him at richard.dwyer at PSENG.com or his phone number is 551 233 3257. He will keep the county engineering team advised of all communications. So thank you for that, Rich. Uh, Kevin said, forgive me for showing up late, is a dedicated bus lane within the scope of this project. JSQ is one of the largest NJT bus terminals in New Jersey. Well, we'll definitely uh, consider it in the alternatives analysis and see if we can make something uh, work, you know. Um, so that, that's been brought up before. That was brought up at the stakeholders meeting. Okay. And Chris said White Castle is planning to redevelop their site. He said join the JSQ CA, CAP meeting August 5th to learn more information. And Adam is next up to be unmuted. Adam, are you still with us? Um, uh, we had one Adam, question. Adam, are you there? Yep, I'm. I'm here. Hi, Adam. Uh, I I I just wanted to address some of the comments that were coming from the previous the last caller. I, I mean, I I think that. You know, while I respect that people have lived in our neighborhood for many, many years, uh, I think that one of the things that was mentioned early on in this call is that uh, roughly 50% or less of Jersey City residents, and especially Journal Square residents, are, are car owners. And we're dedicating far more space to moving single occupancy vehicles than we are to moving pedestrians and cyclists. And I don't think anybody is, I mean, one of my comments was put a two-way bike lane on the east side of Kennedy so that parking wouldn't be taken away. Those seven parking spaces on the west side of Kennedy 
between St. Paul's and Van Winkle wouldn't be taken away, realizing that there is a business there. So I don't think anybody is trying to take away that parking. And I would add that I don't think people want Jersey City to be some cutesy town in Belgium. I think people want to be able to use the roads to get to work and to get to shopping centers and to get to places where they need to go to live their lives. People ride bikes because they need to get from their houses to a supermarket or to the path station. They're not doing it to go on some joyride. They're doing it because they live their lives and they can't, maybe they can't afford to own a car. Maybe they've chosen not to own a car for environmental reasons. Maybe they can't get a driver's license because of immigration status. I think that we are just wholly disregarding the reason that people ride bikes. And it's not because they want to have some joyride or live in a QC town in Europe. It's because people need bikes and people need safe bike lanes and safe biking infrastructure and safe pedestrian infrastructure to live their lives. And I, I just think that it is wholly unfair to say that we need to ban bikes or we need to license bikes because they're riding on the sidewalks without thinking about the fact that they're riding on the sidewalks because there's no place for them to safely ride in the street. If we put a two-way protected bike lane on the east side of Kennedy, you'd be taking away three parking spaces between Kennedy, well, I'm sorry, between Newark and Cottage Street. You wouldn't be taking anybody else's parking spaces away and you would have a protected bike lane. You wouldn't have bikes on the sidewalk. You would create a corridor from St. Paul's Avenue or 650 feet north of St. Paul's Avenue all the way to Bergen Avenue connecting to Montgomery, which is now being uh, rebuilt with a two-way protected bike lane to downtown Jersey City. This isn't, this isn't some attempt to you know, wage a war on cars. This is an attempt to redistribute road space in a way that's fair to the 50% of people who aren't in a single occupancy vehicle. Adam, this is Bernie. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, we agree uh, that's a, you know, that you got a good point there. Uh, the east side definitely looks like uh, that is the best opportunity for a bike lane and uh, it will definitely be one of the alternatives. But I can also, I can sympathize with uh, Mr. Scales, you know, he's got his business and I think the west side, you know, we can keep those parking spaces as well. I mean, that's definitely going to be one of the alternatives. So, you know, it's difficult. You know, we'll try to balance everybody's need and uh, work with everybody and uh, come up with a solution that hopefully magically uh, keeps everybody happy. But um, it's, uh, you know, there's only so much space we have, right? So, but uh, no, absolutely. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak and the work that you guys are doing. It is not lost on us. Oh, no, we, we appreciate the input. So it's great. Thank out. you, Adam. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, there are still more comments here I want to get through in the chat box. We've got about 12 minutes yeah, left. Nicole, uh, yeah, we're running out of time. Uh, have we hit all the callers, given them a chance? Uh, there is one other caller on, and I will unmute them now. Okay, thank you. Who else is on the line? I've unmuted whoever is on the line, but I don't hear anyone talking. Uh, are you Are you talking to me? Yes. Uh, sorry, this is Ollie. My phone dropped out earlier and I had to call back in. Um, I have put all my comments in the chat box, so please continue. Oh, Thanks. awesome. Thanks, Ollie. Great. Okay. Tony says protected bike lanes have been shown to be the best way to get cyclists off the sidewalks. Chris said bikes aren't just a hobby, they're a way for people to get around. We need safe infrastructure for biking. Jeff said the caller made a good point that the street is too dangerous for bicycles and we should fix that. Tony says that we should make the streets safer for biking. Mary said, put the bicycles on secondary roads like the gentleman suggested. They don't belong on major thoroughfares. Michael said, 
uh, Michael was talking to Mary here. Uh, Chris said, fun fact, half of the households in JSQ do not own an automobile. Walking transit and bikes are how we need to get around. Cars aren't the only priority here. And they're saying that they're sort of sick of the war between cars and pedestrians. Okay. But we're all on the same team here, right, guys? Yes. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. we are. We're taking the input and we're going to we're try to make, uh, you know, we're looking at all road users and we're going to try to, uh, you know, uh, make it better for all road users, you know, transit, mm -hmm. users, pedestrians, bicyclists, uh, you know, and, and motorists uh, where we can. So, um, so we're going to, we're looking at, at it at, as a whole. So it's a, definitely a multimodal facility. Yep. Chris said, please coordinate with Port Authority of New York and New Jersey regarding the path station redesign. That's a good point. Yeah. Sumit said, a few loud voices drown out residents of this area who need a bike lane. Share the streets. Kevin said, Adam, this Adam guy has a lot of good ideas. And Sumit agreed. Chris, more Adam, less of the alternative plans document. Eddie agrees with Adam. Good points, Adam, Steve says. Share the roads. Um, um, so the person who made the uh, a comment about the bike, uh, the bus lane, Yes. Uh, if they could, if they could submit that uh, on the um, on the website, so it's official, we would really appreciate that. Yes, and just to reiterate, all of these comments that have been made tonight in the chat box have been heard and received, and we do appreciate them. But we also need to have official record, and the chat box is not considered an official record, so we do need to have them received via email mail or through the project website and if you've been getting the emails from me you you have seen my email address as well as jose's so you can certainly contact one of us and we will get your information that way but the easiest is of course our project website jfkblvdproject.com we're getting to the end here Wow, what great Tony, Tony said, if a car goes on major thoroughfare to get to a job, a doctor, a store, et cetera, then a bike needs to get there too. We don't need secondary roads. We're not second class citizens. And lastly, Steve asked the question, the deadline for official comments, which is one month from now. It's a, I'm sorry, it's a 45 day window and let me just get that date. So I have the exact date. I don't have it in front of me, I'm sorry. I have it's, to normally, it's normally a 30 day window, but we are doing 45 days mm -hmm. this time around due to the current environment of the world. And- um, I think it was August 30th. I'm not... Yes, August 31st, thank you. August 31st, all of the comments may be sent to me. It was at the bottom of your invitation that you received in the mail, and my address is on there. You can also email them to me. My email is npace, P-A-C-E, at Stokes, S-T-O-K-E-S, -E the letter C as in creative, the letter G as in group, dot com. And of course, Jose's information, which is also in all of the emails and mailed correspondence you have all been receiving. So there's that. And of course, as we've said before, the project website has all of that information. So we are encouraging everyone to please submit their official comments those three ways before August 31st. I can see in the comment box, Adam's got a lot of friends and supporters. That's good. Yes, he does. Yes. And, uh, I like the one from Chris, more Adam, less of the alternatives plans document. Uh, that, that would be fine with us. It'd be less work, but uh, we, we have to do the alternatives. It's, it's a requirement in the process. So, uh, but uh, I, I, the point is well taken. <laughs> so. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
the last comment was about Steve uh, saying that he didn't get an invite. It was his councilman who sent it to him. Maybe he could perhaps he could send an email to either me or you so we could add him to the list. Yes, Steve, absolutely. Please do contact us and that way we will have your mailing address and we'll send you an invitation for the next one as well as an email. So we, we've covered both bases. And Sumit said, uh, thank you for moderating. Once again, I hope the earlier feedback was seen as a comment in service of the great work that you are all already doing. Thank you for all you do and for listening and consulting us. Well, our projects are not successful without the public involvement piece, as we all know, and that is where all of you come in. And we're, we're very grateful for all of the comments you've provided us this evening. And I think we're going to have a lot of success in moving forward and getting some things done here. So it's been great, really great. Well, we have just a few minutes left. So if anyone else that is on the screen uh, would like to comment, please chat, type into the chat box or if you'd like to be unmuted and ask a, a last minute question, we're certainly able to accommodate you in the next few minutes. We thank you for your time, Adam. He said the community members greatly appreciate it. We appreciate the input. So. And we also want to acknowledge and appreciate all of the people who have been partners in sharing the information out into the community. Without them, we would not have perhaps received 96 surveys. So we were hoping to cross the 100 line very, very soon. Uh, we've received really great feedback through the website. The survey's uh, a big hit, and whoever's been sharing it out there with all of their friends and, and on social media, we certainly appreciate that. So thank you for that. Jeff said, online meetings seem to encourage a better representation from people who have a hard time attending in person. Can you please continue this format even after the pandemic? Jeff, I wholeheartedly agree, but certainly we do need to resume life as normal at some point. We do have great success with these online meetings. You're absolutely correct. All right, well, we, um, we're we just about at the end here, almost at seven o'clock. I don't see any other comments coming in. Bernie, any final thoughts? No, I, I really appreciate all the input that we received today. Uh, it's really good and, uh, and I have to agree with Jeff. Uh, uh, the first 30 minutes were a little awkward. I felt like we were waiting for the to take off, but I agree with Jeff. I thought the online meeting went pretty well, you know? So uh, the, I, I, we appreciate uh, everybody who participated today because they've done it they did a great job they did a really good job of providing good comments and uh, we had a good back and forth so it's going to make the project go smoother okay well um in closing, once again, thank you for participating tonight. If you have other questions or if something else comes up and you would like to make an official comment, again, please contact us via the project's website. Once again, it is jfkblvdproject.com. All comments must be made through the project website for official records. And the recording of tonight's presentation will be available along with the PDF of the slides within the next 24 hours. So on behalf of the project team and our presenters, we thank you once again for joining us tonight and we wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you and good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone.